the effect of the heat is rising the temperature as we have defined the heat of one calorie by the heat required to rise the temperature of one gram of water to uh, form uh, 14.5 degrees Celsius to 15.5 degrees Celsius. So it means that we can detect the effect of the heat by looking at the change of the temperature. That is one way. Uh, soon we will show that we may have the heat enter the, the, the system without changing the temperature. But in general, not in general, but normally when heat enter the system, we will see the change of the temperature. So we can use the change of the temperature to detect the heat enter the system. However, each substance responds for the change of the, of the temperature due to the heat differently. If you enter one carry to uh, to one kilogram of water, uh, one gram of water, you will change the temperature uh, of one degree Celsius. But if you enter the same amount of heat to the different substance like copper, it will sh not change. Uh, the temperature change will be different. So, to investigate the heat that enter the system by looking at the change of the temperature, we must know the response of the system due to the heat and how can it relate it to the change of the temperature and the parameter that gives us that information is what we call the specific heat is a specific heat uh, to define the specific heat we must first define a quantity that call the heat capacity the heat capacity the heat capacity is defined as the proportional constant when we enter the heat into the system and uh, the temperature change by the amount of delta T. So if we enter the heat amount of Q to the system and we found that the temperature change is delta T, the specific heat, oh sorry, the heat capacity is the proportional constant of this relation. So we can write Q is equal to C delta T. This C is the heat capacity. You can see that this heat capacity is depend on the amount of the substance that is in our system. For example, if you want to rise the temperature of one gram of water, you need an amount of heat. But if you want to rise the temperature of one kilogram of water, you need larger amount of heat to do that. Even though the temperature rising is equal, that is equal to one degree Celsius. So, C is depend on the amount of the substance. 
if we want the parameter that independent of the amount of the substance but only depend on the type of the substance we can define the specific heat the specific heat from the relation Q is equal to the C M delta T C M delta T this small c is the specific heat and m is the amount of the substance or we may say it's the mass of the system so from this relation you can see that this product of cm is equal to the heat capacity or we may write that the small c the specific heat is equal to the big C, the heat capacity per unit mass of the substance. By doing this, we can have the parameter, the specific heat that is independent of the amount of substance that we are interested, but it's, uh, it depends on the type of the substance. Okay. This table shows some example of the specific heat of substances. You can see that we have the data for the elemental solid, aluminum, beryllium, uh, cadmium to iron and silver. And we have the specific heat of uh, the alloy glass or the glass, the glass, ice, marble, wood, and also for the liquid and gas. This specific heat is measured at uh, 25 degrees Celsius and at atmospheric pressure. Uh, we have to specify the temperature and pressure because the specific heat related to the structure of the substance. When you change the temperature or the pressure, it can change the structure of the substance and it can change the value of the specific heat. So we have to specify what is the temperature and the pressure that we measure this value of the specific heat. However, if the change of the temperature is not so large, we can assume that the specific heat is approximately equal to a constant. So, unless we state uh, that we will consider the change of the specific heat, we will assume a constant value of the specific heat like in this table. To measure the specific heat of an object, we can use the technique called the calorimetry and the device in which we do this measurement is a calorimeter. Uh, the calorimeter can be represented schematically as in this diagram. If we want to measure the specific heat of this object. We put it into the high higher temperature Tx and if the mass of this object is Mx and the specific heat of this object is Cx and then we put this object into a water into, into the water which at the lower temperature Tw and the mass of the water is Mw and the specific heat of the water is Cw. Here we assume that we know 
the value of the specific heat of the water and we can measure the uh, mass of the water, the temperature of the water, mass of the object and the temperature of the object. So what we want to do is to measure the specific heat of the object. Now if all if our system is put in the chamber which has the uh, thermal insulator or we can call that the body of the system isolate the system from the environment. It means that they cannot have the energy transfer in or out of the system. It means that <coughs> the temperature transfer can happen only between our object and the water. And since our object has a higher temperature, it will transfer the energy to the water and the temperature of the object will decrease and the temperature of the water will increase until it reaches the thermal equilibrium. As a definition, we have discussed this before that at thermal equilibrium, the temperature of the object and the water will be the same. So, we may, we have that eventually the final temperature of the system final temperature of the system is Tf and in this situation we may have that Tx is larger than Tf which is larger than Tw. The amount of heat that leaves this object can be calculated as the um, Q hot is equal to the mx cx and tf minus tx. From this equation, you can see that Q hot is negative and this is reasonable because the amount of heat that leaves the object will reduce the internal energy of the object. So the change of the internal energy is negative because it is reduced. <coughs> now, when we look at the, e the energy that enters the water, okay, we can we may say that if this is a Q coal. We use the word hot and cold because initially we say that the object is hotter or at a higher temperature than the water. So Q hot is the energy leaves the hot the hot object and Q cold is the energy that enters the cold object. And in this case Q core is equal to the MWCW TF minus TW. Okay. And since the energy cannot leave or enter our system, we must have that the energy that leaves the hot the hot the hot object must equal to the energy that enter the cold object. But we have to be careful about the sign because you can see that here Q hot is negative but the Q cold is positive. So to equate these two quantity we must have that Q hot Q cold is equal to the minus of Q hot. This minus sign is necessary because we must have that the Q core is positive 
but Q hot is negative. So this negative sign will change the minus of Q hot to be positive. And by this, we must have the equation that M W C W T F minus T W is equal to the minus of M X C X T F minus T X. Experimentally, you can see that we can measure T F using the thermometer. Also, T W and T X mass of the water and the object and as uh, we assume that we know the uh, specific heat of the water then we have only one unknown CX that can be solved from this equation so that is the way that we can measure the specific heat of an object using the technique of the calorimetic